हेलो एवरीवन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर समीर एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द हार्ट लंग इंट्रैक्शन ड्यूरिंग ब्रीदिंग आइदर स्पॉन्टेनियसली और बाय मैकेनिकल वेंटिलेशन एंड विल सी इट्स क्लिनिकल इम्प्लीकेशंस सो बेसिकली टू नो अबाउट ऑल दिस इंट्रैक्शंस यू इट इज़ एडवाइजेबल टू गो थ्रू द वीडियो शेयर्ड बाय डॉक्टर शक्ति determinants of venous return the guidance principle that uh, depicts the venous return that will help you in understanding this topic better so first look after that video then come over here i will also be saying something about venous return though in short in details it is better to watch his video and then see this video so basically the heart is a pressure chamber within a pressure chamber how the heart is itself pressure chamber creates pressure for the outflow and also reduces the pressure for the inflow that is venous return or uh, and the cardiac output for the outflow so this heart is present in the thoracic cavity now as we know the thoracic cavity has a pressure in itself it is a pressure chamber it creates its own pressure for respiration so that is how it affects heart and uh, because the filling of the heart that takes place from the periphery is they are not bound in the thoracic cage that has a pressure of its own so that is why it is a pressure chamber within a pressure chamber so the blood flow in the heart is affected by the pressure changes due to inflating and deflating lungs and how we will read about that so there are basically two forces that are uh, applied in the lungs that is one is change in the pleural pressure that happens during inspiration and expiration and there is a change in pressure across the lung that is called the transpulmonary pulmonary pressure so these two pressures generally affect your filling of the heart or cardiac output so during spontaneous breathing what happens due to fall in pressure the heart remains lower than the body there is a figure depicting that and how i will tell you so the pressures in the heart that goes to the negative because it is a, our spontaneous respiration is a negative pressure more negative pressure is created so the pressure of the heart goes lower than the body as the rest of the body from where the blood is drained into the heart they are not inside the thoracic cavity so the negative pressure does not apply to them so the heart pressures go below the uh, the body pressure so that causes the draining of the blood into the heart from the peripheries and the transpulmonary pressure effect can affect the right ventricular emptying and lv filling because the blood goes from the right ventricular into the lungs and then into the left heart okay so the pulmonary pressure that is present the pressure in the lungs the transpulmonary pressure that can affect your rv emptying so if it is high the afterload for the rv is high okay so and if the as the if there will fall in your uh, right ventricular output there will be also reduced left ventricular output and left filling and thus output okay so this discussion can be discussed upon gaitan venous curve so what gaitan did was he superimposed the venous return curve on the cardiac output curve and found interesting results okay so we'll discuss that gradually now cardiac output <coughs> cardiac output the left ventricular output has to be equal to the right ventricular output if the left ventricular output is lower than the right ventricular output so that volume stays back in the lungs and that can cause pulmonary edema so the left ventricular output has to be equal to the right ventricular output now this depends on the return function and cardiac function and afterload okay so if the return function is good that means your uh, good volume of blood comes to the right heart right heart if it is good right ventricular function is good so good amount of blood goes into the lungs then to the left side and then the afterload if the afterload is very high your output will be low if afterload is Good, the your output will be good. So it depends on these three factors. Now coming to the venous return. So the vasculature consists of a series of elastic chambers. Our veins and all from the lower limb and for the upper limb, from the head. There are the series of elastic elastic chambers. Now the volume that fills the circulatory system in the that is in the blood, in the vessel, blood vessels are of the venous chambers. So they stretch the elastic one. now even if there is no flow of blood in the vein but still there will be a pressure because of the volume present okay that is called the mean circulatory filling pressure it is sum of all compliances of the vessels okay so that is why even if there is no heart beat in a patient and you cut open a vein there will be a blood flow the blood will be oozing out that is because of your mcfp till your venous collapse takes place when the vein collapses and there is no more pressure present in the blood vessels so that is called your mcfp so the flow occurs based on pressure gradient from the beginning to the under circuit okay 
so the gradient we will discuss the ra is the final destination so we'll discuss that so what determines the flow as we know the formula of the flow so it depends on the volume resistance provided and the compliance or the stretchiness so the largest volume is present in venules and small vents okay so that is why they are called the capacitance vessels so that your affects your cardiac filling that is the mean systemic filling pressure that was means circulatory this is mean systemic so the cardiac function that depends on your end diastolic pressure so end diastolic pressure your determines volume to be ejected that is called depends on the preload so preload eventually depends on your venous return and the edp end diastolic pressure if the volume is high the pressure will be high and the, the volume is ejected to be higher <coughs> so more of the cardiac function more cardiac output will be there now the end as i said end diastolic pressure depends on the end diastolic volume and the end diastolic elastance now if the elastance of the heart is poor, poor then there will be lower ejection so cardiac output also depends on the afterload and contractility of the heart now decrease in afterload so that is the afterload is the peripheral resistance peripheral vascular resistance to the outflow of the cardiac output so decrease in afterload or increase in contractility or in heart rate will shift the cardiac function curve upward and leftward how this one so this is the normal curve is the black one okay so pr is your right atrial pressure and your cardiac output so if there is reduced cardiac out your right atrial pressure so venous return will be high because your venous return drains into the right atrium so the right atrium pressures are low so more volume comes <coughs> so more will be the cardiac output so if the pr is lower so there is enhanced cardiac output so the curve shifts leftward and if your pr is higher so that will be reduced filling reduced venous return and your cardiac output will be reduced so that is a depressed curve that is the red on the right one so this is what this is what i was talking about your superimposition of venous return curve over the cardiac output curve so as we see so as we see so this is your uh, y axis we have cardiac output over venous return and we have x axis in uh, right atrial pressure so the cardiac output starts with a right atrial pressure minus 2 actually it is not negative it is in relate with relative to the uh, your um, body so that is why it is negative to the body so that is why the uh, starts from minus 2 the right atrial pressure it is not uh, that no, not that the uh, actual value of the right atrial pressure is minus 2 okay so with respect to the body it is minus 2 so the cardiac output as the your right atrial pressure increases Uh, from minus it starts the cardiac output gradually increases as the ra pressure increases the venous return gradually falls there is a equilibrium point okay so the working cardiac output determined the venous return function and cardiac function curve so arthur gaitens this was the graphical approach that he described superimposing one over the other so right atrial pressure at the end of diastole is the cardiac preload which is the major variable in the cardiac function curve at a fixed afterload heart rate and contractility okay so depending on the after load heart rate and contractility the curve will shift downwards rightwards or upwards and left so now coming to the interaction between the heart and lungs the heart is surrounded by the pleural pressure i was uh, already told so during inspiration during our inspiration that is a normal spontaneous effort from the patient pleural pressure becomes more negative so that is what causes the inflow of the uh, air from outside from the atmosphere into the lungs okay so pleural pressure becomes more negative this lowers the heart pressure than that of the body as i have already told so there is a increase in right heart filling so the fall in rap is relative to atmosphere and not to the capacitance vessels of the body okay so the pleural pressure falls more than rap due to ra filling so there is an increase in rv stroke volume during inspiration then to the pulmonary circulation that goes to the left heart so this is a basically a series effect and as more volume reaches the uh, left heart so there is an increase in lv stroke volume so there is increase arterial pressure during expiration now this is the pictorial that i was saying about earlier okay so this is your venous curve starts from the negative okay now once there is an increase in uh, the inspiratory effort takes place the your uh, right atrial pressure okay that falls below the the heart of the, the heart pressure or the right atrial pressure falls below that of the body okay so here we can see on the left side the interaction is much higher so once the patient uh, any human normal human breathes takes a spontaneous breath 
the dural pressure goes down so the heart pressure also goes down we can see the box you know lower than the left in the right lower than the left so the body pressure goes down so venous return increases okay now suppose there is a inspiratory fall in right atrial pressure suppose during inspiration there is a fall in right atrial pressure okay here you see we have a equilibrium point in the solid red line okay suppose there is a inspiratory fall in right atrial pressure during inspiration the <clears throat> uh, right atrial pressure falls okay so that means more amount of volume can be given to the patient okay so that is why there is a left shift of the curve so there is a rise in cardiac output now suppose the there is a right atrial failure or the right ventricular failure so that means the right side of the heart is not functioning properly okay so in the, in that time even if you add fluid there is no inspiratory fall in pr even if you give fluids to these patients so that is that is why equilibrium bond is similar in the right side of the diagram okay so because it will not respond to fluids because there is a right side heart failure okay so even if you, there is a uh, during inspiration there is no fall in pra and fluids is not going to help in this case so during spontaneous inspiration the cardiac function curve must be shifted to the left of the venous return curve to account for the fall in the pleural pressure this one the cardiac function curve intersecting the venous return curve at a higher cardiac output and lower rap is related to atmospheric pressure okay this one but with a higher transmural transmural right atrial pressure so the transmural is from within the chamber to outside the chamber okay so veins have floppy valves so when there the pressure inside a floppy vein is less than the pressure outside the vein it collapses as i said uh, if the mcf is negated so there will collapse now this limits a further increase in flow from a decrease in right atrial pressure below the collapse point so even if some blood is present in the vessel after once the patient it is overcome the mcfp there will be no more flow even though blood will be present in the vessel but there is no more stretching so there will be no more flow so similarly limits a further increase in flow from decrease in right atrial pressure below the collapse point okay so that is called a vascular water valve the flat part of the venous return curve so in that pair even if you add water to the <coughs> to this uh, circulation it is not going to help to the patient so further lowering of pleural pressure will not increase your venous return or if you add more fluid that will also not increase your venous return another factor limiting the venous return is the capacity of the right ventricle so what happened why this doesn't take place this if you keep lowering the lower pleural pressure more and more and more because the right heart filling limit is 140 to 60 ml because the heart is closed within the pericardium okay so there is a fixed volume that can get filled into the right ventricle and right ventricle is less muscular than the left ventricle distensibility is less they share the interventricular septum but the right atrial free wall is more it is a less thick than the left ventricular wall okay so the volume cannot be very high it cannot accommodate more it is 140 to 160 ml so coming to the response to the fluids patients with inspiratory fall in rap as i told may not always be fluid responsive if they are nearer to the plateau of the cardiac function curve okay so if they are nearer to the plateau function of the cardiac function curve even if we give fluids to the patient there will be no inspired there, there will be no increase in your venous return when the right heart filling is limited as i told if the right heart filling is limited there is right, right ventricle right side function right side cardiac uh, defect inspiration also cannot increase the emptying of large veins now coming to the cardiac output so during inspiration your atrial pressure generally falls why because this fall in pleural pressure is transmitted to the atrial pressure so more this fall in pleural pressure is negative so that is transmitted to the atrial pressure and there is a fall in cardiac output the lower of the heart relative to the body left heart must generate greater pressure to overcome that negative pressure okay so that is why the after load is increased and that is why the cardiac output is reduced so for example so for the respiratory rate of the patient is 10 per minute and your heart rate is 75 so the inspiration is 2 second okay so one breath is 6 seconds taking 1 is to 2 ratio i is to e ratio inspiratory will be 2 seconds expiration will be 4 seconds now each heart beat with a rate of 75 is 0.8 second okay so at least two or three beats are affected okay once this 
per see, there is two seconds of inspiration so 0.8 seconds means so in three heartbeats will take place during the inspiration so only these three are affected so whatever the reduction in cardiac output whatever cardiac output was left behind they will be given in the next subsequent beats okay so the volume remains equal so the retained volume distributed in subsequent beats now the afterload is a problem in a failing heart or a depressed heart function now if this there is a cardiac function is not good if there is left ventricular ejection function is low so this high afterload will cause a problem we will see its clinical application later i will tell so lung inflection coming to the with right ventricle so as there is lung inflection there is increasing inflation there is increase in transpulmonary pressure okay volume of air goes inside there is lung distension as there is lung distension it compresses the vessels pulmonary vasculature there is increase in transpulmonary pressure now the lung inflation it has but it doesn't affect the pulmonary vascular resistance as blood is not compressible the walls only okay we'll see what happens so increased feeling of left heart causes uh, drainage of pulmonary capacitor vessels due to rise in transpulmonary pressure okay so as the interalveolar vessels get squeezed the vessels get squeezed but blood is not compressible okay so the interalveolar vessels get squeezed on inspiration and thus increase left ventricular filling so if the interalveolar vessels get squeezed the blood will drain into the left side of the heart from the lungs to the heart so your left ventricular filling will increase however the intraalveolar vessels which they are present in between the alveolus they are not compressed they can take up more and more volume okay so the usual effect is that inspiratory increase in left heart filling of about 2 mm of mercury because of this draining of the interalveolar vessels into the left side of the heart now the cvp does not change during expiration as it is passive okay but if abdomen is involved in active expiration then your right ventricular filling increases during expiration also but rv volume is fixed right so that is why patient will feel your breathing difficulty so if there is limited volume pressure will increase of rv but flow will not increase this is called as the kusumal sign so this was in generally in the spontaneous patients now let us see the interaction in the ventilated patients now ventilation pressure where positive pressure ventilation what we were experiencing in spontaneous breath was your negative pressure ventilation now we are getting a positive pressure ventilation this will affect both your right atrial pressures and venous reservoir pressure the mean systemic pressure is generally constant over a brain okay so the volume goes here and there but generally the body maintains the pressure okay so the variations in right atrial pressure is the major factor determining the fluctuation in pressure gradient for the venous return okay so once there is a positive pressure ventilation a positive pressure is applied to the heart okay so during negative pressure your rap or the heart was getting uh, the pressures were lower than that of the body so but in positive pressure ventilation we are applying a positive pressure on the heart and in the lungs so the rap rises and there is a reduction in venous return okay during inspiration this causes cardiac output fall okay so this means if there is a high Uh, pressure in the lungs because of the positive pressure ventilation and there is a fall in cardiac output because there is a reduced venous return that means that patient is in volume deficit so that if we give more volume then that can be delivered more to the left heart and that can increase your cardiac output so this is the importance of this okay if positive pressure ventilation there is a fall in cardiac output and bp so that means patient is volume deficient now the detrimental effect of positive pressure ventilation on cardiac output it can be as i told minimized by fluid resuscitation that is volume reduction or by keeping the mean itp and swing in long volume as low as possible so if the intrathoracic pressure is not risen by much so the venous return will not be affected we will get a normal venous return and thus a normal cardiac output so the itp that is why low tidal volume ventilation will also help in minimizing your bp fluctuations okay Now, small increases in peep can cause rise in your intrathoracic pressure. If you keep on increasing the peep during expiration, also some higher peep will cause higher intrathoracic pressure, and thus fall in venous return and cardiac output, and thus lead to hypotension. So this can be mitigated by or reduced by increasing your stressed volume or increasing vessel tone. So either you give more volume or more fluid to the patient, so that it increases the venous return and then the cardiac output. or you increase your afterload increase the vessel tone you give inotropes and vasopressors to increase the vessel tone and increase the blood pressure okay 
However, in the positive pressure ventilation, your diaphragmatic excursion, the diaphragm goes down in positive pressure ventilation during inspiration. So as the diaphragm goes down, there is a rise in intra-abdominal pressure. This also somewhat reduces the effect of raised intrathoracic pressure because as the di diaphragm goes down, your intra-abdominal pressure increases. That will cause draining of your vessels from abdomen into the thorax. Okay, so that is somewhat reduced, although not completely negated. Now, uh, effect of positive pressure on left ventricle. So, left ventricle inspiration, your in, in positive pressure ventilator will increase your pleural pressure rather than decrease it. So, as the pleural pressure increases, the LV transmural pressure will decrease. As I told earlier, transmural pressure is your pressure within the chamber and outside the chamber difference okay so if the pleural pressure increases your transmural pressure will decrease now this decreases your lv afterload aiding in lv ejection okay so the lv afterload as it, it reduces aiding in lv ejection this if this fails this this will cause your cardiogenic pulmonary edema okay your transmural pressure has reduced so your heart cannot pump higher okay so if the transmural pressure is high the effort the cardiac pumping cardiac output will be more if the transmural pressure is low, so <coughs> there will be uh, rest less amount of volume will leave the left ventricular. This is called your cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So if it is a failing heart, so your transmural pressure cannot overcome. So after LV afterload decreases and decrease in LV ejection and there will be your cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So this is limited by associated decrease in venous return. As positive pressure reduces the venous return, some part, if the venous return will be high and left ventricular output will be low. So all the uh, blood will remain in the lungs that will cause cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Okay, so that is somewhat reduced by limit by associated decrease in venous return. Okay. Now left ventricular failure during ventilator weaning. Okay, so during weaning when the patient is gradually going into negative spontaneous breathing from the positive pressure ventilation. So this must be associated as we read in the previous part that LV transmural, decrease LV transmural pressure and decrease LV afterload aiding in LV ejection. Okay. So here during weaning, so increased LV afterload will induced by phasic decrease in intrathoracic pressure with each spontaneous breath. Okay. So your phasic decrease in ITP but there is increased LV afterload. In increased LV afterload, more of the blood is finding it difficult to leave the heart. Okay. With phasic decreases in ITP, more of the blood is getting in. Okay. So that is what patient goes into left ventricular failure during weaning. Okay. So that is, that is called as weaning failure. So weaning failure can be predicted by changes in levels of your ProBNP and there is increased extravascular lung water. Okay. So you understood this one? Now going to the next point, right ventricular after. Now RV afterload, there is generally no change as all of the pulmonary vasculature are under same positive pressure. Okay, so blood goes from right ventricle to the lungs. So the pulmonary vasculature is present completely under the thoracic cavity. So whatever pressure is applied is applied to all of the pulmonary circulation. So there is no change of pulmonary vasculature under the same positive pressure. However, Change in lung volume associated with ventilation markedly alters the vascular resistance and elastance. Okay, due to changing zonal conditions, which actually determines the RV afterload. Okay, so pulmonary vasculature as a whole, there will be no change under the same pressure because it will be applied to everyone. But since the pressure is applied, your pulmonary vascular resistance will be higher because there is a positive pressure obstructing the flow. Okay, so in inflow. Okay, so because the lungs is getting inflated by inspiration so that rv has to work against that force so that is why the afterload of rv is increased okay so during inspiration your increased lung volume causes your pulmonary vasculature to distend increasing its compliance and minimizing prior, uh, uh, increased rv stroke volume induced increase in rv afterload so as rv distance load is lower than the left ventricle positive pressure ventilation has greater effect on the right ventricle okay left ventricle has more distensibility as i have already told so it can adapt it can distend more if there is positive pressure but rv is a fixed of lower tidal lower volume 140 to 160 ml we have discussed so the positive pressure ventilation affects rv more on uh, more than the left ventricle now what happens in ARDC is there is severe hypoxia patient is in severe hypoxia because of the hypoxia there is 
hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction so as there is hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction so the rv after load increases now blood has to because of pulmonary vascular uh, vasoconstriction right ventricle has to send blood against higher pressures so generally if it is prolonged during ARDS, so generally there is RV failure, okay. So in ARDS, there is increased pulmonary artery pressure due to hypoxic, pulmo uh, hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction rather than your P alveolar, alveolar pressure greater than the PA, okay. So what happens in recruit maneuvers, how does it help? Recruit maneuvers, you open your collapsed alveolar units. So this will reduce your overall pulmonary impedance and resistance leading to increased RV ejection. So that is how recruitment maneuvers help. So what happens when there is recruitment maneuvers, when the patient goes into, you give higher positive peep, so the vascular keep open, uh, then if there is uh, prone position of ventilation, your prone posterior position of lungs will get open, so there will be diversion of circulation, okay, so collapsed dialogue elements will open and there will be uh, increased uh, flow from the right ventricular. So right will really increase. So that is how it, the recruitment maneuvers help. Now high tidal volume, if there is high tidal volume, that will also impede your RV outflow as I said when the volume get expanded. So higher the tidal volume, higher will be the pulmonary extension and higher will be the work done by the right ventricle because there is increase in pulmonary vascular resistance. Now this mechanical ventilation, what it does, it increases zone 1 and 2 areas, west zone 1 and 2 areas. Okay. So thus the more altering the flow goes more towards the zone 3 area. We know the relation between pulmonary artery pressure, uh, pulmonary pressure and your venous pressure so, you know, according to zone 1 and 2 and 3. Okay. So what happens? Mechanical ventilation increases your zone 1 and 2 areas in the lungs thus altering the pulmonary blood flow to the zone 3 areas. So increased resistance and RV after load, more dead space ventilation, increasing dead space ventilation and there is increased shunt blood flow. Okay. So this is what happens in because of uh, mechanical ventilation. So to keep it <coughs> now minimal, we have, that is why the lower tidal volume ventilation are now is coming into uh, foreplay rather than your as earlier we used higher tidal volume ventilation. Okay, so that is how lo lower total tidal volume ventilation helps. Okay, so now coming to the LVRV interdependence. Okay, they are both parallel series as well as your uh, uh, parallel circuit as well as your series circuit. And the blood flow goes from the right ventricle to the lungs and then to the left ventricle so that is a serious connection now lv and rv are side by side sharing a septum interventricular septum so that is your parallel circuit okay now the pericardial phase is uh, fixed so whatever pressure is transmitted from one side to the other side okay as the volume is uh, pericardial space is fixed so volume of one chamber will be transmitted to the other chamber so increased filling of one ventricle so the there is increased filling on the left side it will decrease the diastolic compliance of the other so if this is getting filling so it will the diastole of the other side of the will get reduced okay so the pulmonary vasculature low elastance and high capacitance that is it can have more and more volume inside it pulmonary vasculature so this allows the pulmonary vasculature to accommodate right vent, uh, right ventricle stroke volume variations without much changing pulmonary artery pressure okay now bronchial asthma and COPD patients, they are high compliance states. In ARDS what happens, ARDS patients when there is very very low compliance states, so the pressure changes are not transmitted to the vasculation. If there is a very low compliance, okay, the compliance in very low compliance, the pressures are not transmitted to the vessels, the effects are lower. Okay, but in case of bronchial asthma and COPD which are high compliance states, whatever patient is ventilated more with higher tidal volume or whatever those pressure changes will get transmitted easily because they are high compliant so these transfer of pressure changes from the alveoli and all will be transmitted into the uh, to the vessels and into the heart okay so pulmonary uh, pressure is easily transmitted from the lungs to the vessels or the pulmonary vasculature thus high tidal volume and heat get transmitted and there is reduced right ventricular fluid load and thus elevated afterload so this will cause hypotension now if there is patient is in rv failure okay then there is no point in giving fluids uh, more fluids if you give more fluids suppose these patients like what we dis uh, discuss is the autopeep in case of bron bronchial asthma or COPD patients 
your there is uh, you keep on over distension of your alveoli increased intrathoracic pressure and there will be reduction in venous return as there is a reduction in venous return cardiac output will reduce and there will be severe hypotension however not all the time will fluid work in this in these cases if the patient is in right ventricular failure how even high any amount of fluid you give right ventricular is not able to pump that blood into the lung and then into the left side of the heart okay so in these patients with who have right ventricular failure your volume therapy will be detrimental in osa patients what happened increased pressure there is because of the closed glottis during inspiration so there is a strong negative pleural pressure okay so there is a augmentation of venous return this venous return keeps on causing rv dilation with shift of interventricular septum to the left side of the heart okay so as there is a shift of septum to the left side of the heart your lv compliance will reduce so will be the stroke volume that is why here it is we see the ulcers paradoxes okay now patients who have impaired rv function rv volume due to sudden rise in venous pattern okay they will have so in these patients again fluid will be detrimental now patient going to rv failure patient have go develop pulmonary artery hypertension okay so then they eventually go into failing rv now, cpap keeps your airway open okay but uh, so that way as your airway is open the negative pressure created is not very high okay and but uh, so that is why your pressure changes generally improves but they have not yet shown any proven mortality benefit or cardiovascular comorbidity so the take home message is so we discussed your our uh, during spontaneous breathing what we face how the heart lung interaction takes place then in positive pressure ventilation in ards patients even ards patients in uh, patients with shock in patients with copd in patients with osa in patients with right ventricular failure weaning failure so these are the clinical implications of your heart lung interaction okay So the heart lung interaction describes the effects of changing intrathoracic pressures and lung lung volumes on heart and circulation. Now uh, the interplay has major consequences as we discussed for the patient under mechanical ventilation, venous return and uh, your pre and after load for the right and left ventricles are dynamic in dynamically influenced by your mechanical ventilation because of the positive pressure that it is trans get transmitted now the transmission is low in case of severe ards patients where the compliance is very very low so the pressures do not get transmitted from the lungs to the vasculature however in high compliance states like your copd and your bronchial asthma they get transmitted and cause hemodynamic instability now the interactions can potentially lead to dramatical renal deterioration as we saw during weaning we can have lv failure in ards patients we can have right ventricular failure in copd patients also there can be right ventricular failure fluid may not help so we have to recognize what is happening uh, in the patients in these clinical scenarios and how to stop them or if it has happened how to treat them okay so interactions can potentially lead to dramatic clinical deterioration when they are not recognized during mechanical ventilation okay so the earlier you realize with the change in pressures with the change in hemodynamics we realize so we can know whether to give fluids or whether not to give fluids whether to come down on the tidal volume whether to increase the peep or reduce the peep or make the patient prone it helps us a lot in taking clinical decisions so they offer possibilities to possibilities to dynamically assess the volume state and right heart function of the patient okay so this is how the heart lung interaction helps